Welcome, 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 welcome to Better Than Ever Live, wherever you're watching or wherever you're listening. Hope you're making today your masterpiece. I am apologize. I'm sorry. I am seven or eight minutes late, uh, just late getting to where I was coming from, uh, but I am grateful to be here. And, and if you're watching this live or you're watching it later or you're listening to it later, I really appreciate it. My name is Dr. David Geyer triple board certified orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine specialist, anti-aging and regenerative medicine expert, media medical expert, keynote speaker, author, all of that kind of good thing. I help you feel and perform your best regardless of age, injuries, or medical condition. Very, very excited. I, in such a rush to get here, I didn't even bring the study that I was going to talk about about exosomes. So I'm going to talk about exosomes and osteoarthritis sort of off the top of my head, try to explain things in layman's terms. I'll do studies on exosomes going forward, but uh, just know if you have any questions about exosomes, questions about osteoarthritis, this is your chance uh, to ask whatever you want. Maybe this will be something that you don't know, you haven't heard that much about. So I'll explain how I talk about it with patients and you can go from there. Please remember, as always, Nothing I say on this show is meant for medical advice. This is general information and education only. I haven't seen you, looked at x-rays, you know, any of that. I am not giving you medical advice. I'm not your doctor. You're not my patient. This is just for information so that potentially you can go and talk to your doctor about it, or you can come see me as a patient in Charleston, South Carolina. The link or to my website and information about that is below. Sarah, it's good to see you. I am glad you are here. Uh, let's see. All right. The other thing I want to say real quick as we get into this is that I am not telling you you should do exosomes. Uh, again, it's not medical advice, but specifically with exosomes, as like when we talk about peptides, or at least a lot of peptides, talking about stem cells, platelet-rich plasma, the Food and Drug Administration in the United States still considers most of these treatments experimental. And that applies for sure to exosomes. These are actually fairly new in the regenerative medicine world, at least as it comes to orthopedics. So just know that, again, this is information. I'm not saying that it's it should be legal or, or, or approved or any of that. I'm just saying it is considered experimental. Insurance largely won't pay for it. Now, we've talked a lot over recent weeks and months about osteoarthritis, the wear and tear of the cartilage and bone that it eventually breaks down, whether it's the knee or the hip or the ankle or the shoulder, elbow and multiple other joints uh, where ultimately you get rough surfaces moving on each other. Sometimes it gets to where they're bone on bone and then you need joint replacement or so it, uh, the theory goes. Now, uh, there's a lot of theories as to why osteoarthritis happens. The whole tread on a tire, gradually the joint wears out. There's probably an element of truth to that, but I don't think that's the main component. I think Studies are more and more showing that it's related to a uh, an, an issue with these inflammatory cytokines and degradative enzymes, the interleukin-1 beta, interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor alpha, matrix uh, metalloprotease 13, and, and a number of others that break down bone and cartilage over a long period of time. And the treatments that we typically have don't do a good job of stopping that. Cortisone does not stop that well. Hyaluronic acid does not stop that well. Uh, certainly going in and scoping the knee and cleaning 
cleaning up the joint doesn't do that well at all. If anything, studies, as we talked about a few weeks ago, show that that surgery actually speeds up the progression of arthritis. So that's one of the thoughts, one of the challenges is not much in and, and physical therapy, which I'm a huge fan of, does not stop that process either. And so that's been one of the challenges uh, as to this progression. Once people start developing osteoarthritis over time, it gradually gets worse. People need knee replacement. So we've looked at all kinds of different things to maybe not just stop the damage like we've talked about with the penicillin polysulfate uh, in recent discussions, but also rebuild the cartilage, rebuild the joints, stop the inflammation of the joint lining. We've looked at platelet-rich plasma. Now that's been used for all different types of orthopedic surgeries and, and in other parts of medicine for a long time may have some beneficial uh, aspects as it comes to osteoarthritis. There are certain peptides that are thought to be helpful, albeit in mostly uh, animal studies, AOD 9604, BPC 157, potentially helpful. Stem cells have gotten tons of attention in the United States. Now, my gut feeling on stem cells is it's a great idea in theory. I, I don't know how, you know, there's a lot of studies that have shown sort of lukewarm effects to stem cells, at least as they were performed in the United States. But I don't think that's an issue as much of the stem cells as more of an issue in the United States. Most orthopedic surgeons get stem cells from the patient from doing a surgery where they take blood and bone marrow from your hip, from your pelvis, your iliac crest. But the problem is as we get older, there aren't that many functional viable stem cells in that concentrate. Now, there are maybe 100 or 300 might be enough. It probably does something. Uh, there's some good results with just re-injecting that into a joint. But in the United States, we're not allowed to then send that uh, aspirate with its 100 or 300 stem cells to a lab that can culture them and turn it into a million or three million. That's why so many people go to Germany or the Cayman Islands or Antigua or Panama where they can do that and where I would say stem cells do seem to work very well. Now there's other factors and and substances that are in that bone marrow aspirate that may prove helpful as well, not just the stem cells, but that people that say stem cells don't work and the joint replacement surgeons love to say stem cells don't work and PRP does, doesn't work, at least with the stem cells, that's part of the reason why in the United States. But that's where I think there's going to be more evolution coming, more uh, opportunities and more things that are tried to hopefully rebuild the joint. Now, exosomes specifically are, the way I like to explain it is there's, there are the technical term is extracellular vesicles. They're these little compartments inside of stem cells that are basically released from the stem cell and they're communication signals. They affect cell-to-cell -cell communication. A lot of people think the exosomes are what actually do the work of stem cells. And exosomes have been shown in different studies uh, to inhibit inflammation of the joint lining, the synovitis that causes a, lot, causes a lot of the pain and swelling. They've been shown to aid in subchondral bone healing, the, the, car, or the bone under the cartilage to help that remodel. And then yes, promote cartilage repair, cellular differentiation. Now these are early studies. Exosomes haven't been around that long, so we don't know if you took somebody that's bone on bone and gave them stem cell or uh, exosome treatments you know, over and over for a period of time, could you regenerate a normal knee? I think that's probably a lot to ask, but if it's early to moderate osteoarthritis, maybe it's beneficial. There have been some very good early studies, but again, it's very early. The nice thing about exosomes, depending on, again, the doctor you see and what labs they work with and all, is that one, you can get millions of those exosomes instead of a few hundred stem cells in your typical stem cell preparations here in the United States when they draw it from your bone marrow of your hip. But also, uh, there's no surgery involved going to get it. So that is potentially nice. The stem cells 
I keep saying that because again, a lot of people interchange the term. The exosomes that a lot of people use, are, and, and I know uh, clinics that get them from amniotic fluid. The the labs uh, harvest them, not the fetus, but the fluid around it. The amniotic fluid, you know, obviously very high abundancy of regenerative cells, and so you get potentially millions of exosomes. And the patients and the people I know that have had exosome treatments have been over the moon happy with their results. Whether they got one injection or they got a series of three injections, they've done very well. Yes, that's anecdotal. Again, those are just people telling me how they did, but uh, it does seem encouraging. Even better than what people tell me with platelet-rich plasma. Uh, another one that's on the horizon, alpha-2 macroglobulin that's being used in uh, several places. I hear good things about that. I don't have any personal experience with that, using that with patients, but it is something exciting. This is going to continue to evol uh, evolve over the next five or 10 years uh, that we're gonna get more and more and better treatments, I really, really believe we are going to figure out a way to rebuild healthy bone and cartilage. Uh, there's a lot of challenges. Cartilage doesn't have uh, blood supply and, and it, there's just a lot of things that make it tricky, but I do feel like we're, we're getting there. It, what we have now is probably not the 100% thing that's going to get there, but each step of the way, I think we make more progress. There's so much money in labs and companies across the country and across the world researching this. I've sort of jokingly said to patients for a decade now, whoever can basically figure out a way to rebuild cartilage is gonna be a trillionaire. I, I absolutely 100% believe that. Uh, but it may not just be any one company or any one treatment. It might be a collection of different things, stopping the damage, stopping the inflammation of the joint lining, rebuilding the subchondral bone, promoting proliferation and differentiation of cartilage stem cells. There's a lot to this, but I do feel like we will get there. I would love one day in the future, whether this is 10 years from now or 25 years from now, to, for people to not need joint replacements at all. Joint replacements are great for a lot of people, and I, I have tons of friends that are joint replacement surgeons, and they're all good people. But it, it's, a, it's a great surgery, except when it isn't, when it doesn't go well. And I know that's not frequent, but I, I can give you lots and lots of stories that people had bad outcomes. And that's a bridge. Once you cross that bridge, there's no going back. So there's that. But I, what I see in my world of sports medicine is people that were very, very active. Yes, they feel better, but they never get back to the level of physical function they had before. They you know aren't running marathons anymore. They're, they're able to do some things, but they're, a lot of them are not super excited with the downgrade in their activity level for what that's worth. So that's what I've got for you. That's, uh, um, again, sort of off the cuff because I forgot uh, to bring my study that I was going to talk about about exosomes, but, and Sarah says very, inf well, very informative. Uh, thank you. Let me uh, try to read your question here, uh, Sarah. Um, during my job, my hand bones keep knocking while working and my hand joints started painting. Let me now do this one. Could this lead to arthritis? I'm not really sure necessarily when you say, you know, the, the hand, you know, knocking and that kind of thing. Hands can get arthritis. The common joint that gets arthritis is what's called the basal joint, where you see that there. At the base of the thumb, where, let me, let me show it this way where the base of the thumb meets the wrist kind of right in there. Very common sort uh, location of arthritis. Women typically get that a fair amount. It's thought at least to be a little bit related to how much motion the thumb joint has. Uh, but that is an area I have injected a variety of different substances for basal joint arthritis. That is a surgery that can work well, but it is a long recovery. I've had several friends go through that recovery from that surgery and it was brutal. It was six weeks in a cast and then another six weeks in a splint and then a lot of hand therapy. It was about six months before they really felt normal. Uh, so that is potentially an area if somebody develops early arthritis of that basal joint uh, that it, some of these treatments might be, um, might be useful. 
I don't know why I'm struggling putting these on the screen. Well, Angela, there we go. Angela says, thank you, David. I brought BPC uh, hoping for improvement. And, uh, and that's right, you're in uh, Australia. The, um, so interestingly, and again, this, I, I, the topic of this was uh, exosomes, but since we're talking arthritis, now there's a lot of uses potentially for, for BPC other than osteoarthritis, but that study that I talked about I think it was last week or the week before, a lot of the people that that doctor gave BPC into the knee for probably had osteoarthritis. He wasn't an orthopedic surgeon, didn't do many MRIs, so it was unclear what most of those, I think it was 17 patients had, or maybe it was 16 patients had. Uh, but what, so you can't make any conclusions on did it rebuild cartilage? Did it you know, remodel the subchondral bone? Did it decrease inflammation of the joint lining? Any of that. But what it did, what he could show, is that it decreased pain. Now, it was a retrospective study. There's issues with retrospective studies, recall bias, people remembering how much pain they had a year ago and how much pain relief they got. There's a lot of issues with that. But having said that, BPC injected into an arthritic knee, into an arthritic hip maybe, arthritic shoulder, I expect people would get pain relief. Now, I don't know for how long. I don't know what if it's necessarily doing to rebuild the joint. But when you look at cortisone, which can give pain relief, but actually breaks the joint down, some people would suggest that maybe BPC could be an alternative to cortisone at least. So, And I know that using exosomes with BPC as a single injection into the knee, you get sort of the pain relief benefits short term while the exosomes take their months and months to do their rebuilding. Could be a potentially useful combination. All right, that is all I've got. Again, a lot of me talking off the top of my head. I do try to explain this in ways that people understand. And so you know, I can get into all the technical terms and really confuse you. And it might be more technically accurate, but I would much rather have people understand this type of thing. So join us every Thursday if you want to learn more about some of these new anti-aging orthopedic treatments that I am starting to talk about. I love to do that. Also, join us on Fridays for Ask Dr. Guy or Live. If you have questions about something else, any kind of orthopedic injury, surgery, rehab, recovery, I'm here just about every Friday, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, so join that. If you want to come to Charleston and see me as a patient, and I get people that come from other countries, pretty much all across the country that come to Charleston. We can do sometimes phone calls for follow-ups, but it's hard to do injections and hard to do certain other treatments that we do virtually. So we have people come at least the first time to Charleston. It's a great place. You'll love it. The information to my website, drdavidgeyer.com, is below. Send message, fill out that form. My assistant and I will get back to you and figure out how we can set that up. Sarah, you are so welcome. I very much appreciate it uh, and very, very grateful uh, that you're here. Again, very sorry that I was five, six minutes, seven, eight minutes late, uh, but I, I very much appreciate everyone being here. I will be here tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, if you have any other orthopedic questions, and we will be here most of the most every Thursday throughout the month of December for Better Than Ever Live. So thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night.